When people have heart attacks, what happens with their breathing? Let us read the following quote from Western study. And tidal CO2 could provide a highly sensitive predictor of return of spontaneous circulation during cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Published in Critical Care Medicine, 1996. But there is also another American study. Let us look at the title of American cardiac professionals. And tidal carbon dioxide measurements as a prognostic indicator of outcome in cardiac arrest. Published in American Journal of Critical Care, 2001. Now we can consider how people who are sick due to chronic illness or maybe sick for months, for years, how they died. And if you have relatives, friends who are in severely bad condition, consider their breathing is very, very heavy. In fact, their breath holding time can be about 3 seconds, 2 seconds, and just before death, it's just 1 second only. And more than 90% of people, when they die, they die in conditions of severe hyperventilation. In order to confirm this result, let me quote another Western study. The combination of hyperpnoia, increased breathing, with an elevated pH and a subnormal or moderately low oxy oxygen tension occurs in many serious illnesses that entirely spare the brain. This includes the alveolar, capillary block of diffuse pulmonary carcinomatosis, heart failure, advanced cirrhosis with or without hepatic coma, acute pulmonary infarction, and many others, including the cryptic pulmonary congestion that accompanies most serious disease in the abducted and elderly. Plum, Hyperpnea, Hyperventilation and Brain Dysfunction, published in Annals of Internal Medicine, 1972. What is interesting is that all these effects mentioned by Dr. Plum are caused by hyperventilation. High pH appears due to hyperventilation. We breathe heavy, pH of the blood is changed. Low oxygen is the same result of hyperventilation. There is also another study in a critical care unit. What they did, they took patients and divided them in four groups, according to their carbon dioxide content. And they found that mortality of people correlated with CO2 content. Those patients who had low CO2 due to heavy breathing had up to 88% mortality rate. Those patients who had almost normal breathing, only 20-25% mortality. It was concluded in this study. Respiratory alkalosis, blood alkalization is a normal physiological result of overbreathing, was the most common acid-based disturbance observed in a computer analysis of 8,607 consecutive arterial blood gas studies collected over an 18-month period in a large intensive care unit. Group 1, CO2 less than 15 mm mercury, mortality rate 88%. Group 2, CO2 between 20 and 25 mm mercury, Mortality rate 77%. CO2 between 25 and 30 mm mercury. Mortality rate 73%. CO2 between 35 and 45 mm mercury. Mortality rate 29%. Shock and sepsis were most common in group 1 patients. This finding suggests that extreme hypocapnia, low level of carbon dioxide, in the critically ill patient has serious prognostic implications and is indicative of the severity of the underlying disease. Published in the American Journal of Medicine, April 1974, the title of the study, Extreme Hypocapnia in the Critically Ill Patient. Hypocapnia, as it is mentioned in this study, means low carbon dioxide level. Now, Dr. Boteke, when he was a student at the Moscow Medical Institute, he observed breathing of sick people. And he found exactly the same. The closer the death, the heavier they breathed. And the shorter was the breath holding time. So he reasoned that it probably it would be possible to slow down their breathing. And indeed, he experimented on himself and on his patients. And he found that they can get relief if they start to breathe less. Now we can go to the following question. How it is possible that just one parameter, heavy breathing, causes different problems in different people. And in order to understand that, let us consider breathing and genetics. How genes can reveal themselves in certain symptoms. 